welcome. This is Chris Abraham, Chris Cast, episode uh, twelve, season two. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am using a really old digital voice recorder from Olympus called the WS six hundred S, and so the quality might be different or altered. So please forgive me. Pardonnez moi s'il vous plaît. Um, this episode is going to be a frivolous one. It is titled Eight Quick Reviews of Netflix Shows and Movies I Decided to Review for You. So this is going to be a doppelganger of the blog post that I posted on to chrisabraham.com titled Eight Quick Reviews of Netflix Shows and Movies I Decided to Review for You. I might actually have a couple extras on this episode um, that are on other channels, so uh, please uh, bear with me. You might get bonus content. So I watch too much TV and view too many movies. Uh, it is a Achilles heel. However, I really didn't watch much TV or view any movies uh, between like 1990 and 2010. So those were years, um, 20 years where I didn't watch anything. So, so many TV shows and so much stuff, so much content, so many movies are just unbeknownst to me. And I thought that I was a movie aficionado. Apparently I am just a movie snob because I only watched fancy stuff. Uh, but right after this message, I will get back to you on that. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is Chris Cass, Season 2, Episode 12. This is where I review some Netflix movies and TV shows for you. Uh, so I'm going to make a section per. There's eight of them, so there'll be eight little uh, sections. And uh, maybe I'll give you a couple bonus uh, shows. Anyway, let's get started. I gotta tell you, I really like Netflix. I know a lot of people say terrible things about Netflix, about the uh, about the shows not being watchable, or they're just being, but they're being a limited uh, a limited library. The truth is, is that they have an infinite amount of shows, and if you're not seeing something that you want to see, you have to break through the algorithm because the algorithm will only give you what it thinks you want to watch. And so that's why it's important to read reviews and find out new content on Netflix so that you can have a better experience. All right. First up is a terrible movie that I watched in through completion uh, because you know because Melissa McCartney M M Melissa McCarthy was in it and um, Octavia Spencer was in it, but it's called Thunder Force, and I believe that they almost called it Thunder Thighs, but because someone in the writer's room had better sense than to do that, uh, they called it Thunder Force. And i got to tell you, it's the best movie in the world uh, as, until you actually catch up with uh, the grown-up girls uh, Melissa McCarthy and uh, Octavia Spencer as Lydia Berman and Emily Stanton, respectively. Because the funny thing is, is that the teen girls that represent them early in the show 
as they become fast friends in high school, are much better, and the story is more compelling, uh, than the entire uh, rest of the movie. The movie is, is, is stupid, it's irrational, it, uh, I, I don't know if you know this, but I really hate physical comedy when the physical comedy is about fat jokes. Um, I believe that there was no reason to care about any of these people. I believe that they were superficial. I believe that even though the young girls uh, did an amazing job of building baseline, uh, there's no reason to care about uh, the powerful women in this movie. It is, it is an offense to superhero movies. It is not a tour de force of feminism. And I believe that if Tina Fey had written and produced and directed this movie, it would be a tour de force. I just believe that, um, I believe it was, uh, it was bad. Hey Google, who directed the movie Thunder Force? Thunder Force was directed by Ben Falcon. So Ben Falcone is Melissa McCarthy's husband and a man. Why is a man doing that? Hey Google, who wrote Thunder Force? The author of Thunder Force is Ben Falcon. Yeah, Ben Falcone, uh, her husband. This was a, a gimme to, to, to him. It was garbage, it was anti-feminist, it was anti-woman, it was anti-hero. And, um, it just went for the yucks. Went for the yucks. Completely understand it now that I found out that uh, Melissa McCarthy's husband, a hack comic, uh, and, uh, and, and basically Melissa McCarthy's wife is, is behind this. So, that's, I understand that now. It was a, uh, it was a, it was a gift to her beloved husband for being an awesome husband, but I would I would start the movie and then I would make sure that you're in an ejection sheet, seat or that you have a um, that you have a parachute because you're going to bail on this movie and I encourage you to watch it to the moment that you bail. Um, there is. It can't even be. It can't even be uh, um, solved. It can't. It, it's not even solved by the cast of characters that they have. They have an entire suite of of A list talent, including that guy from. Oh, what's it called? Anyway, he plays uh, a a guy with completely worthless. Uh, crab pinchers for arms. Um, but even that, even the, the entire thing, I wouldn't recommend it. But I watched it anyway so that you don't have to. But I definitely say take a look at it for the, uh, for the teenage uh, characters. And I've got to give them shout-outs. Um, Ty LaShawn played Team Emily and Mia Kaplan played Team L Teen Lydia. Uh, it would have been so much better if the entire movie was a teen comedy where we find out that uh, teen, um, teen Emily actually had her own amazing uh, basement laboratory and they were able to create the superpowers as they were teenagers to, to, uh, to avenge uh, Emily's uh, parents' death. And, by the way, avenging your parents' death is, uh, is just lazy. That's a lazy, uh, lazy, lazy thing. All right, be back uh, after the break. I hope that was useful. I'm not very good at these review things, so we'll see how I do in the next one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Hey, Chris Cast, episode 12, season 2. I do not know why I keep on going back to the blacklist. I basically write in my blog post, I hate this show, I love this show, I hate to love this show, I love to hate this show. Uh, I'm, but the reason why is that I'm obsessed with any woman that has a brunette bob, a black bob, a dark-haired, uh, blunt bob. And the moment I saw uh, the show, uh, Megan Boone um, as Agent Elizabeth Keene, uh, she has this great hair. And when you scrutinize her, you're like, f- funny teeth super huge chin, and then you just realize after you're in it for a little while that she's freaking beautiful and wonderful, and you would watch the show um, even if it wasn't surrounded uh, by intrigue and 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 so forth. It's a, a show about a, uh, um, a, a crime lord slash assassin by the name of... Uh, of um, Reddington, and he, uh, he, it's it's a long story, but basically Reddington comes to the FBI to give them a list of people that they need to arrest called the Blacklist, and every episode is about one person that Reddington gives to them, um, and it's never a pure give, there's always a reason that Reddington wants this person pursued, and it's for his own enrichment, and it's for his relationship with Elizabeth Keene, and I don't want to go ahead and spoil anything, but of course, you know, I mean, from the very first moment, you're like, Reddington's got to be uh, Keene's father, duh. Anyway, besides that, I'm also obsessed with James Spader as Red, and I also watch it f- for uh, uh, Hisham Tafik as Dembe, who is the uh, who's Red's uh, African um, uh, sidekick or partner or associate, and I watch it for. Uh, I mean, everybody else is fungible, though. Uh, Aram and Samar, uh, Aram and Samar are bit characters, but they are both. Uh, uh, one is a Mossad, former Mossad agent. The other is, I guess, a hacker, technologist stud. And they're really good characters, and they work for it. And Ryan Eggold as Tom Keen is pretty keen. That guy's great. I mean, um, the only other show I've seen him in is a is a, a TV show that's going on now where he's a he's the head of a of a teaching hospital, and he's got cancer and all this other stuff. Hey Google, what TV shows are Ryan Eggold in? Ryan Eggold stars in 10 TV shows. Here are the first three, New Amsterdam, The Blacklist, and The Blacklist, Redemption. So New Amsterdam is what he's in now, but in Blacklist he plays uh, an assassin, operative, black ops, who knows, crim crime lord, uh, bad guy, good guy, um, mercenary, criminal for hire, assassin for hire, and um, ends up making a beautiful little little married wedding, wedding married twice, having baby life with um, with Elizabeth Keene. However, foreshadowing, it's not happily ever after. Of course, I'm not through the entire series. Uh, it goes on forever, um, and. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever be done with it, because it's uh, it's sort of like, for me, it's sort of like liver, right? Like, the idea of liver, whenever I see it being made on TV by an amazing chef, it always seems like a good idea. I go ahead and buy liver, buy onions, buy chicken liver, buy uh, beef liver, buy um, uh, goat liver, whatever, and it just, goose liver... All these things, aside from maybe goose liver, just seem like it's, you know, it's awful. Ha <laughs> ha, awful. Um, 
And I like liverwurst. I really love liverwurst, but I've just not been able to make it work when it comes to liver and onions. In the same way, I keep on going back to Blacklist, get my eye full of uh, Elizabeth Keene, uh, see what's going on, see the cool ensemble that Red is wearing, get to have some wisdom experiences with Dembe, um, and, uh, and that's it. I mean, I don't know if I recommend that you jump down the rabbit hole. However, here's one bonus. I really love Burn Notice. I really loved it. I, I jumped on it, and I wrote it, and I didn't stop writing it until it was freaking over. Hey, Google, how many seasons was... Uh, hey, Google, how many seasons was Burn Notice? Burn Notice has seven seasons. Yeah, that's a million a million episodes, so uh, that show is freaking good. Um, I will try to think of other shows that are like that. Um, my mom really liked White, uh, white, white Collar, and my mom really liked uh, that one, The Mentalist. So maybe I'll check those out. Anyway, I'll come back with the next one. Thanks for listening. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Season 2, episode 12 of The Chris Cast. And my name's Chris Abraham. We're on to the third one, which is called Country Comfort, Season 1. This is basically a uh, Catherine McPhee vehicle. And if you love Catherine McPhee, either for her talent, for her soul, for her spirit, for her beautiful face, for her banging body... Um, or for her music, you are going to love this show. It's so sweet. It's so family orientated. Um, she's a girl who's been done wrong by a dude she was dating for 10 years, and she ends up uh, breaking up with him after he dumps her from the band, and she stumbles into this household of a million kids on a, on a horse ranch, horse breeding ranch, and... Um, she falls into becoming the nanny, and the uh, and the hilarity ensues. I mean, there's an amazing. Hey Google, what's the cast of? Uh, hey Google, what is the cast of? There are 26 people in the cast of Burn Notice. Hey Google, the what's the cast of uh, of 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 Country Comfort? There are nine people in the cast of Country Comfort. Here are the first three, Catherine McPhee, Eddie Cibrian, and Ricardo Hurtado. Eric Balfour is in it. I liked, I liked him in that show I can never remember about, uh, which is based on, a, I believe, a Stephen King book. But Janet Varney is really funny. She plays Summer, who is, who is uh, Bo, Eddie, who's played by Eddie Cibrian, who's Bo's girlfriend while Kathy McPhee plays the nanny. And then there's a bunch of kids, all of whom have beautiful voices. Ricardo Hurtado plays Tuck. Jamie Martinman plays Brody. Uh, Shiloh Verico is really amazing as Cassidy. Um, and then Piper Braun plays uh, Chloe. And Griffin McGuire, uh, McIntyre plays Dylan. The two youngest people. Uh, She's 37 years old. Catherine McPhee is 37. She, uh, her birthday is March 25th, 1984. But she is so, so beautiful. And so, um, uh, it's such a good, I mean, it's a farce. It's a comedy. It's a family. Uh, it's, it's basically, you know what it is? It's exactly 100%. The hills are alive with the sound of music. So it's 100% sound of music. Bo plays, you know, the dude from that. And uh, she plays uh, uh, 
the uh, the nanny, and they all burst into song, but it's country, and there are, um, of course, there are um, guest appearances, and it's just just fun. It's fun. But if you are if you have a uh, a cynical bone in your bo- body, you either won't like it or you'll hate watch it. And hate watching it is perfectly acceptable. Give it a go. Hey, welcome back. This is Chris Abraham. Uh, this is Chris Cass, season two, episode twelve. Uh, this segment's about Lupin. Lupin, 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 um, and uh, hey Google, what does Lupin mean in French? Lupin means lupine in French. Hey Google, what does the French word Lupin mean in English? Here's a summary from the website vocabulary.com. When something reminds you of a wolf, you can describe it as lupine. The adjective lupine comes from the French word of the same name, with Latin roots, lupinus, of the wolf, from lupus, wolf. So there you go, Lupin is the wolf, and he is played by, did I even say who he's played by? Um, oh, he's played by Omar Sy, or Omar C, as Hassan Diop. Um, and I, I'm going to read you what I wrote. Um, is Lupin a spy, a thief, a murderer, an assassin, a hero? It's hard to know. Lupin is directed like a young adult series, but it's deadly and violently serious. That said, Omer C. Omer Sy as a San Diop is a goofy dreamboat. I'm in love with uh, Ludivine uh, Saunier as Claire, his wife. But if you know me, you totally understand my type. I'm totally, everything about French women drives me crazy, especially if they're short, have short legs, long upper bodies, and big noses. Just, just poke me with a fork, I'm done. And uh, I'm in love with her, and Eton Simon as Raoul, um, their son, uh, holds his own with his own sort of swag and style, uh, superb, uh, So this is really fun if you want to practice your French. The French is pretty simple. It's slow enough. It's um, it's not a a it's not an art film. So if you want, you can turn off the subtitles and listen to it in French. You can play it in French with subtitles, and I think it might even have a dubbed version on Netflix. Though I'm not sure. But either way. Um, there's no way that this would even be remotely possible in the real world. Uh, none of any of, uh, of Lupin's clever, uh, none of the clever is remotely clever. Um, uh, follow the money does not track. Um, although I guess he is a thief, so accruing wealth for a high quality thief is, is possible. And also, um... The hero of this series is a thief. So there's that. There's also a um, a revenge uh, thread. I guess the most important part of this is about revenge, or venge, re- revenge, uh, being vengeful. Uh, what is the quote? Hey, Google, what is the quote about uh, revenge being uh, uh, served cold? According to Wikipedia, the popular expression, revenge is a dish best served cold, suggests that revenge is more satisfying if enacted when unexpected or long feared, inverting traditional civilized revulsion toward cold-blooded violence. There you go. Anyway, so it also involves his family life, his crime life, his relationship with the detective, a corrupt detective, and of course his love for his son. Um, And a book... A book, I don't even think it really is a book. If it is a book, I would love to read it. En français. But it's, all my friends are bragging about it. Everybody seems to love it, and you will too.
Hey, I'm back. Chris Cast, Season 2, Episode 12. It's all about uh, movies and TV shows on Netflix. The next one is one that I hate watched. It's uh, terrible. It is the worst, and it's probably going to do fantastically well because A, it's a Kevin James vehicle. B, it is the most typical version of a uh, of a of a uh, comedy uh, short form comedy. Uh, series that you can ever imagine, and three, it is 100% committed to the world of NASCAR, the world of barbecue, uh, the world of good old boys, and in many ways, uh, a gentle mockery of strong women and women in general. Uh, so, if that's what you're into, watch it. If you love Kevin James and just want to watch him uh, saunter around playing the same Kevin James character, then do that. Uh, I recommend hate watching it, um, but I cannot recommend it at all. I wrote in the blog post, I wrote, this is a terrible show and I hate watch the first season and I really love Kevin James. Might be really popular with the NASCAR kids. I'll be right back in a second. Hey, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Chris Abraham here, Chris Cass, Season 2, Episode 12. This is about uh, uh, the the series that ha- is over already, and uh, you should have seen it, if you haven't, called The Magicians. And it's bloody brilliant. Uh, it's witty. It's savvy. It's clever. It's woke. It's funny. Uh, it is basically all the inside jokey, super smart humor that was secreted in Buffy is in here. Everybody's t- super too cool for school. I can believe that everybody in here uh, was a extremely gifted um, magician who was um, handpicked to attend a double secret um, magician school that... Uh, hides in um, in the Hudson Valley. I freaking love the show. I love I love the gender uh, fluidity. I love the uh, the sexual the sexual fluidity. I love the snarkiness. I love the glam. I love the um, perversion. I love the visuals. I love the audio. I think every single woman in here is more beautiful than the other. I mean, they're all stone-cold foxes. And I even have crushes on all the male characters. Like, like I'll tell you, man, I might be totally freaking queer if being madly in love with everybody on the show, uh, men and women included, even Quinn, uh, I gotta tell you, man, this show is everything. It's so everything that I went out and bought for my Kindle, uh, The Magician's first, uh, first book and the audiobook. And, um, while I'm not that happy with the second, uh, book, um, yet, I kind of fell off it. The first book is everything you need to know to love uh, the Netflix series even harder because it it discusses their rigorous training. It discusses uh, the 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 granular detail that would never make it into a a series like this. But let me warn you: the fabulous, fabulous characters of the series on Netflix bear no resemblance to resemblance to the more quirky, enigmatic, uh, norm core, uh, I mean, not even, I believe, I believe that, like, nobody is fabulous in this team, they, they behave fabulously, but nobody's beautiful, nobody's kicking, nobody's banging, um, and they're having sex, but nobody's like, when you watch this show, it's like, uh, the many colors of Benetton, plus like a Dior ad, plus like I don't know. Everybody's so hot in this show. Um, 
it's impossible, but in kind of an accessible way, right? They're not tall, willowy. They're short and curvy, and and uh, and like there's out of all the episodes, there's even a really best episode. And this is what I wrote in uh, in the blog post. This is how much I love the magicians. I bought the book and read it, and the audio book and listened to it. And I'm working through the second book. Lost me a little. Also, season three, episode five, called A Life in the Day, is burnt into my brain and my heart, and I loved it so much. It's the one where Quinn and Elliot live an entire life together while making a magic mosaic. Amazing. It's about an elite and exclusive witch in wizardry school, but debaucherous. An actually gay and fabulous Harry Potter. Um, Elliot, man. I mean, is not Elliot the sexiest person ever invented on television? He is completely sexy. And even though Quinn is just a, a kvetchy, kvetchy little Nancy boy, I mean, even he has his moments of, of pure uh, brilliance. And, I mean, the entire thing is, is extremely well done. Let's see who the cast is. Hey, Google, what is the cast of the Netflix series The Magicians? Sure. Here's some helpful information I found on the web. Stella Maeve, Hale Appleman. Stella H Maeve is Julia Wicker. Julia's awesome. Hale Appleman is Elliot Woe, who's freaking amazing. Arjun Gupta. Um, actually, Julia Wicker is the most amazing woman you've ever met as a character. She is completely fierce, brilliant, uh, tough, unapologetic, ruthless, and dead sexy. Arjun Gupta plays uh, William Penny Adiodi. Penny is, is, I mean, he's classically beautiful and classically sexy. Um, and even he, who is amazing, pales compared to everybody else. Summer Bishi plays Margot. Actually, Margot is who I'm talking about. Sorry, Margot is the completely... F but, you know, Julie is too, but Margot is completely fierce. It's amazing. Hey, Google, show me the cast of the magicians. Hey, Google, show me the cast of the magi uh, magicians. There are 53 people in the cast of the magicians. So, Olivia Dudley... Here are the first three. Who? Olivia Dudley, Hale Appleman, and Stella Maeve. So, Olivia Dudley is this... Uh, zoftic, bombastic, quirky, furtive, pensive, nerdy, bodacious witch named Alice Quinn, and she's the smartest and most brilliantly gifted magician of them all. Hale Applebaum plays Elliot Woe, who is, you know, um, who is uh, in cahoots, <coughs> dead set non-sexual partners, well, who knows, with Summer uh, Bischel, Mark, who plays Margot Hansen. Then you've got still... Oh, well. Anyway, I love this show, man. But I especially love that episode, and I don't want to spoil it for you, so go out and search <coughs> on Netflix if you don't have the patience for the show. Just watch Season 3, Episode 5, A Life in the Day, and you're welcome. Hey, welcome back. Season uh, season two, episode twelve of Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham. Uh, the next series is a limited series, and I really was moved by it. Although it doesn't seem like my cup of tea. It's called Warn Stories. W O R N Stories. Um, the series is such a breath of fresh air. Very cool, intimate, and simple. I literally laughed and cried. It's about people and an outfit, a piece of uh, a piece, a way of dress, and it's very sweet and emotional and compelling. It's soft core clothes porn. Hey Google, what is the series? Uh, 
On the website, hey, Google. Hey, Google, what is the plot of Warren Stories, the series on Netflix? Sorry, I don't know hey, how Google. to help with that. What is W O R N Stories about? According to Google Books, New York Times bestseller, now a Netflix original series, everyone has a memoir in miniature in at least one piece of clothing. In Worn Stories, Emily Spivak has collected over 60 of these clothing-inspired narratives from cultural figures and talented storytellers. So that's all I need to tell you. It's really beautiful. Uh, it's touching. It's random. It and, and you know what? And it's really the world of clothing seen by uh, someone from Manhattan. So it's got that point of view. If this were made by someone from D.C. or L.A. or Miami or San Francisco or Honolulu or Dubuque or Houston, it would be an entirely different uh, series. It would be an entirely different series if it were written by someone from Atlanta. That's for sure. And it might even been it might even have been better because uh, this series, while moving and everything, is extremely cliche and has been done a million times. But this is a really good version of that thing. Hey, this is Chris Cast, Chris Abraham here, Season 2, Episode 12, Chris Cast by Chris Abraham. This is the last segment, the last review, and I'm going to first read it directly from my blog, because it seems long. I'll read this to you. Uh, Ginny and Georgia, Season 1. This series is anti-Gilmore Girls for sure. All the sweetness and happiness is the result of unintended consequences and good luck and good hearts. However, it's really it's a really rough ride and filled with darkness I can't reveal for reasons of spoils spoilage. This show amazed me. Antonia Gentry as Ginny is a gorgeous chameleon. Diesel La Turaca as Austin, her little brother, is perfectly cast. Felix Miller, uh, Millard as Marcus does uh, the, the sexy teenage love interest neighbor does damage sexy perfectly. Brian How, uh, Howie as Georgia, who might or might not be uh, lesbian, um, but who is gender fabulous, is this generation? Oh no, no, sorry. Brian Howie is Georgia. Sorry about that. Um, and she is this generation's Julia Roberts, just darker and more complex. Look at her. I mean, she's so beautiful. She's so she's so believable as the character of Georgia. And this is such a a um, uh, unbelievable uh, suspension of disbelief, uh, darkly playful series. That I mean, she shouldn't ha she shouldn't need to be believable. Um, Oh, Sarah Wineglass as Max plays a very, very deep water beautifully. She's the one, the next door neighbor, the brother brother of, uh, of, um, of Marcus, uh, the damaged, sexy, perfect guy, and um, and then Mason Temple is Hunter Chen. Uh, totally, I almost dismissed him as just some smiley dude who did not deserve the attention, or, I mean, everybody's so Google over him, but all I did was see this kind of, like, smiley doofus, but um, you realize very soon, I hope there's more seasons, because, honestly, uh, Hunter Chen, uh, played by Mason Temple, is, once you started to punch back, after he got hurt, he was just awesome. Katie Douglas it plays sort of a throwaway character, but you know that she has body dysmorphic dis issues, and I want to know more about her um, and her trauma. I could go on and on, but that's enough. Watch it. It's much more than meets the eye. 
and um, I recommend it highly. Uh, it's not what it seems in the first episode. It seems like in another freaking version of, like I said, Gilmore Girls, but it's not. It gets dark pretty quick, um, uh, and I highly recommend it. Come on back, you hear? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is Chris Cass, Season 2, Episode 12. My name's Christopher Abraham. You can call me Chris, like my friends do. If you really like me, you can call me Chrissy Poo, uh, especially in public, around other people. Um, thank you for listening. I don't know if that was useful. Uh, here are two... Here are two extras that I recommend. They're not on... Uh, they are not on uh, Netflix, and I might review them further uh, later. But uh, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, I love that show. I love The Rookie. Um, I really like um, uh, the new version of, uh, of MacGyver. I really like the new version of, uh, of, of Magnum P.I. I don't... I never got hooked by Hawaii Five O, the new version. I... I don't ever want to miss a episode of Bull. And I kind of watch Bob Hart's Abishola um, because it, it, you know, it's, it's important to watch. It's a, it's a good show. Um, and uh, I hope that Last Man Standing never ends. And, um, and I do watch the TV show The Connors. All right, so those are my bonuses. You can reach me at chrisabraham.com. You can look into my brain at chris-abraham.com. I'm apparently right now supporting the um, return of MacGyver back to the air because MacGyver was canceled by CBS. And if you go to chrisabraham.com slash... Sorry, if you go to twitter.com slash chrisabraham... You'll see that apparently I'm a poster child of having uh, MacGyver renewed. Um, you can reach me at chris at abraham.su. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Chris Abraham, YouTube at Chris Abraham. You can find me on Strava. You can find me on Fitbit. You can find me, I don't know, everywhere. I'm on Instagram at Chris Abraham. Um, I'm on Reddit, at Chris Abraham. Uh, I guess that would be slash you slash Chris Abraham. And um, that's it. You can also text me or WhatsApp me, or uh, you can even... What is it called? You can even signal me at, uh, at plus one two zero two three five two. 5051, and if you want to talk to me, I'm at calendly.com slash chrisabraham slash 15. Make a, make a, uh, a scheduled um, call, and I'd be happy to talk with you. On that note, my home base for this podcast, ChrisCast, is anchor.fm slash chrisabraham. Um, although you can find me on Spotify, TuneIn, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Apple Podcast. You can find me at Spotify. I might have just said that. Um, whatever that thing Adam Curry is doing, Podcast 2.0, I think I'm on there. Uh, I'm on TuneIn. I'm on, uh, I believe that I'm on uh, iHeartRadio. Uh, there's a million other ones. Um, I know that I'm on Podcast Addict because that's what I listen from, and uh, you're welcome to subscribe, but I'd also like it if you could, um, whatever platform you're listening from, I'd love it if you would review, subscribe, like it, give me stars, but I'd especially like that review, because, you know, um, I only have uh, 13 listeners, and I would like 14. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Talk to you next time. Alfita Zane, adieu, mahalo.